payload power to spare in the first complete line of totally new trucks ever introduced. GMC trucks. New not only in look and dimension, but new in frame, engine, powertrain, and suspension. Quality built and engineered for the utmost in hauling efficiency. Cut your trucking costs with GMC. It's a V8. It's a hardtop. It's a station wagon. It's the new 1957 Rambler Cross Country Hardtop, America's most distinctive automobile. The car that handles easier, parks easier, rides smoother, and turns heads wherever you go. Fun test the new 57 Rambler today. Spring comes late to a mountain, long after the earth has warmed, two miles below. The snow clings to the mountain's rocks, clogs the trail, hushes the cold wind through the bitter pass. On a day like this, a short time ago, two Corvairs pitted their engineering against the mountain, famous Pikes Peak in Colorado. car has ever accomplished the 20-mile run so early in the season before. But watch Corvair. No snow tires, no change. Yet Corvair kept climbing. Snow enough to make the steep 10% grade treacherous. But Corvair's rear engine distributes the weight so well, the rear wheels grip firmly, and Corvair continues to climb. Breathtaking switchbacks. Everything depends on Corvair's traction and sure, quick steering. 14,000 feet, hard to breathe. A man takes quick little breaths or blacks out. But Corvair's engine just keeps on purring. At last, the summit, the peak, and Corvair still climbs. And the car of the year sets a great new performance record. What's more, these are the very same cars that proved Corvair's economy in the mobile gas economy run. This is the very same car that let a professional driver rack up 27.03 miles per gallon in the economy run. Proof that with Corvair, you get both economy and performance. Drive the car of the year, Corvair by Chevrolet. class of its own. It stands alone. Chevrolet for 1964. No other automobile offers so much of what so many people desire. With styling that brings you back to look and look again. Chevrolet stands alone. Alone in pure dedication to beauty and relaxation. Alone in jet smooth luxury. Here is space for freedom of movement, enclosed in a Fisher body carving, in motion as quiet as space itself.
in a class of its own, Chevrolet for 1964 stands alone. See your Chevrolet dealer. This was it, my big day. Golly, you can't help but feel proud when your whole family remembers. And look at this, just what I always wanted. And it came along just in time, too, with scenery like this to see and to shoot on our Colorado vacation. Helen, that's my wife, didn't waste a minute getting her clothes together and her suitcase packed. And Bobby was raring to go, too. Whoops, wasn't about to forget those. Susie and friend checked out. Come on now, everyone carries his own bag in this family. Last one out? Me, naturally, with my new camera in hand, of course. You know, 50 weeks a year I'm in and out of a 7-Up truck, so how do we spend our vacation? You guessed it. But it's worth it. What a wonderful trip this turned out to be. Well, I see that we're not the only ones who picked the Colorado Springs area for our big trip. Pikes Peak was the first grand sight we saw, and so much scenery, it was just impossible to catch it all with a camera. But this isn't bad for a beginner, is it? And it's a moving shot, too. Approaching town, we ran into a different kind of scenery altogether. Different, but just as beautiful in its own way to a real 7-Upper. It seemed as if there was a 7-Up vendor at every motel, gas station, and shop we passed. I just had to have these shots to take home and show the gang, to show what can be done with some real effort. We don't see this kind of vendor placement where I come from, but there's no reason why we shouldn't. Next, we drove out to the site of the new Air Force Academy. They sure picked a wonderful spot, this beautiful area just north of Colorado Springs. The Academy buildings were just being erected when we were there, but even then, we could see how impressive it was. What a big project. Just think of all the 7-Up they'll be drinking there. <laughs> Sorry, I just can't seem to get my mind off business. Here's downtown Colorado Springs. And this is the famous Broadmoor Hotel, a vacationer's paradise. This hotel is so complete, it's almost a city in itself. Golly, what a spot. When Helen wasn't looking, I took these shots of the pool. Did you ever see such a beautiful diving board? Of course, I told Helen I wanted to get those 7-Up bottles on film. Somehow, I don't believe I convinced her, so I decided I'd better get some of the other kind of scenery, too. This is the Cog Railway, which runs up Cheyenne Mountain. I put Helen and the kids on it, and then I drove on ahead. There's the famous Ice Palace, and the beautiful Broadmoor Golf Course. And here they are, at the end of the line, up on Cheyenne Mountain, at Cheyenne Mountain Zoo. The kids had a terrific time here, and confidentially, so did Helen and I. There were homely rhinos and handsome zebras, and of all things, imagine real live polar bears and long-legged giraffes here in Colorado. This is Cheyenne Mountain Road. Ripley called it the world's most crooked highway. What a road to pick for our first mountain drive. We were sure glad to reach the summit with its rustic lodge. And I was ready to take a breather and get my land legs again. Here's another welcome sight that really made us feel on top of the world. And what a view. The Colorado Plains and way below us, the town of Colorado Springs. On the way down, we stopped at the Shrine of the Sun, built in memory of Will Rogers, famous American humorist and writer. He often climbed here. These guardian dogs near the shrine were imported from China, but this view has been here all the time. It's really breathtaking. Next, Seven Falls, the grandest mile of scenery in Colorado. That's what the sign at the entrance to Cheyenne Canyon claims. The road is surrounded by rock formations, each with a quaint name. You can see the shapes if you look hard. This one's called the Mexican Saddle. Sure enough, at the end of the road, there's that welcome big attraction, refreshing 7-Up. We were glad we didn't have to make this climb. That cable car you see there did all the work. 
It's a short haul, but steep. Down there is where we came from. And you know, the kids were sure those burrows were stuffed. But we proved they weren't, didn't we? The falls themselves, and you can count all seven of them, are spectacular. Kind of makes you think of the way 7-Up flows in these parts. This is the view from the base of the falls, and it's impressive too. We'd heard a lot about the Alexander Film Company back home. We use their playlets in our theater and TV advertising, and it seemed like a good chance for a look behind the scenes. It sure is a big place. This is the entrance to the building where all business affairs are handled. So we joined up with a guided tour to see the whole plant. And were we lucky, they just happened to be filming a 7-Up playlet the day we were there. This is how the scene will look when it's shown on theater screens. This is General Palmer, founder of Colorado Springs. We hadn't been very long before Bobby and Susie started to make a game of spotting 7-Up vendors. Each would take one side of the street and count a point for each vendor they sighted. Competition ran hot and heavy for a while, but Susie finally lost out because she ran out of fingers, and that was as far as she could count. Our travels took us next on the famous Gold Camp Road. This was originally the railroad bed running to Cripple Creek. Look at those turns. Whoops, stay on the track there. It must have been quite a haul for those old locomotives. President Theodore Roosevelt, riding one of the old trains, described this route as scenery that bankrupts the English language. This is the famous and exclusive Garden of the Gods Club. This beautiful club is at the edge of a wide mesa with a wonderful view of the Garden of the Gods itself. This is the first of the strange rock formations we saw. Most of them have names, and with a little imagination, you can actually see the figures that give to each one its name. Like a lot of other tourists, we made up names of our own for many of these weird rock shapes, and we had a circus doing it. Built right into this rock wall itself is Hidden Inn. This little spot is a favorite with visitors to the Garden of the Gods. From the balconies, you can get a full view of the entire park. Everyone is in a holiday mood. It's easy to make friends here. It looked as though something special was starting, so we went over. How about that? Real Indians. They were doing one of their ancient ceremonial dances. The dance is centuries old, so we were told. This 7-Up vendor is somewhat newer. All Americans know how good 7-Up can be after a little exercise. And these earliest Americans agree, too, on the good, fresh taste of 7-Up. Actually, you could spend weeks just exploring the Garden of the Gods itself. We were able to see how some of these rock formations got their names. For instance, at the very tip-top of this big rock is a formation called the Kissing Camels. It's a favorite with amateur climbers. This one is known as the Devil's Footprint. And here's the Scotsman, or as some people call it, Sir Harry Lauder. And there's famous Balanced Rock and Steamboat Rock. Balanced Rock gets its picture taken thousands of times every year. As we went through Manitou Springs, I went to Susie's aid when the kids started playing their new game again. There's one for our side, Susie. And there's another one for us. You know, it's too bad we're not counting painted walls like this one, or like this. Say, there's number three, Susie. Four, and five. And I didn't think it was possible to locate them at swimming pools. This is Williams Canyon, Road to the Cave of the Winds. The sign at the Narrows here kind of has us wondering if we could make it. But like it says, a million others have, and we did too. But you do sort of feel like holding your breath to make yourself skinnier until you get through. This is probably the narrowest, steepest, and crookedest road I've ever been on, and I was glad it was one-way traffic. We were able to see the entrance to the Cave of the Winds up ahead, once again, we were glad to make it to the top, up to the lodge, where we could stop and look around a bit. Somehow we knew we'd find this familiar friend waiting for us. After leaving the Cave of the Winds, we drove on up through the mountains to you'd never guess where. The North Pole. We didn't dare pass up this attraction. 
The kids couldn't wait to get out of the car. They were all over the place. And then they spotted Santa Claus himself with some of his deer. He took them over to see the North Pole, covered with real frost. The deer here are tame and friendly. And of course there are Santa's helpers, the pretty brownies and elves, and a brightly colored toy village to delight the young and the young in heart. Time now for some real mountain driving, Pike's Peak itself. The peak was first seen by an army lieutenant by the name of Pike back in the early 1800s. He's supposed to have said that it would never be scaled by man. Well, the grades up to this reservoir were easy. This supplies water for all of Colorado Springs and for their 7-Up. And that's the peak we're headed for. Little by little, the grades get steeper, the curve sharper, and you're going up and up. Halfway up at Glen Cove, we gave the car a rest. And we took time out for a 7-Up while we shopped for souvenirs and admired the view. This used to be a stop for the horse-drawn carriages that climbed the peak, just as our autos do now. Then on above Glen Cove, we passed Timberline, 11,500 feet up and still climbing. It was just one switch back after another and one beautiful view like this after another too. But we were determined to make it, so on up we went, and soon there was nothing but rocks and moss and tiny plants. Then as we were driving along, this sign at Bottomless Pit caught our eye, so we stopped here. The pit isn't really bottomless, it's only 2,000 feet straight down. Whew, that's a long way to the bottom. That's the road we came up on, way down there. Each 4th of July, there's a stock car race up this road, and they tell me those fellows do 100 miles an hour over some of those stretches. But this was about our speed, slow. And you know, you can actually see weather forming up here. Finally, this welcome sight. We would made it to the top of a peak. This is a little like being on top of the world. It came as kind of a surprise to see so many people here atop this famous mountain. The view, it was spectacular in all directions. To the west, mountains and more mountains, just as far as the eye can see. And off to the east, there's Colorado Springs, way down there below us. When the skies are clear, they say you can see all the way to Kansas across these plains. But the day we were there, these rain clouds were forming, and they made kind of a scenic beauty all their own. Here's real availability. This startled me too, but it shouldn't have, for this is where 7-Up belongs, right at the very top. Well, everything in our family that went up had to come back down. So after a final look around, we headed for home. It was quite an experience, and I'm sure glad I have it all on film. There are sights you have to see to believe. Scenic shots and 7-Up shots. And there's nothing like a good camera to make and keep a record like this. And nothing like seeing a good vendor program in operation to open your eyes to some great new ideas about 7-Up availability through vendors. And you know what? I'm going to start putting them to work now.
This is beautiful Colorado Springs at the foot of Pikes Peak. Six railroads and two airlines offer fast mail and express service. The Pikes Peak region, famed for scenic grandeur and bright sunshine, is a photogenic paradise. Located at Colorado Springs is the Alexander Film Company, world's largest producer and distributor of short-length screen advertising, employing over 600 people at the home studio. From the administration building, the activities of about 150 field representatives are supervised. In the Mammoth Stage Building, the finest of short-length advertising films are produced. And from the specially designed Service Department Building, over 150,000 feet of film are shipped every day to many of the 9,500 theaters which exhibit these movie playlets for more than 24,000 advertisers. Sales of many nationally known products are promoted with Alexander movie programs on a manufacturer-dealer cooperative basis. These films are produced exclusively for the manufacturer and demonstrate his products throughout. The fact that many manufacturers authorize the Alexander Film Company year after year to produce their movies is proof of continued satisfaction. More and more companies are coming to Alexander for the finest of screen advertising, seen every day in thousands of theaters. Now let's follow the production of Alexander short-length advertising from start to finish. First, advertising writers with motion picture experience prepare the scenarios or work with the advertisers on scenarios prepared by them. After the scenarios have been approved, elected, all preparations are subject to the approval of the advertiser's representative assigned for technical supervision. Lights, action, camera, and production is underway. Cameramen who know every trick of the trade work with experienced directors and technical supervisors. Meanwhile, the art department is producing the animations and titles that help the playlet tell the advertiser's story. Here also is made the dealer's name trailer that will follow the playlet on the theater screen. The films from the stage, art and sound cameras are processed and edited in the Alexander Film Company's own laboratory. Here more than one and one half million feet of film a month are developed and printed using exclusive Alexander processes. Coordination of stage, art, sound and laboratory results in the finest of short length advertising playlets and identifying trailers such as those that follow. If you are one of the homemakers who find that adding variety to the daily menu is a problem, here's an inexpensive way to vary your meals. Include fresh, tasty bakery goods. For breakfast through dinner, there are many palate-pleasing delights. Your family will agree fresh bakery goods are a delightful addition to every meal. We believe that only the best is good enough for our customers. Every effort is made to assure uniform quality at prices within your budget. Give us a trial. Colorful potted plants bring outdoor beauty inside the home. Flowers always add a note of cheery brightness to any setting, and a tasteful array of delicate blooms denotes the perfect hostess. There is always a wide variety of fresh flowers to make your home a place of beauty. Our selection of fresh flowers is unequaled for colorful beauty. When you need flowers, remember that we are always anxious to serve you. When the family gets together on a project like this, there's real fun for everyone. And for added pleasure, there's a big supply of crystal clear 7-Up in the refrigerator. You see, 7-Up is the all-family drink. Taking step ensures tremendous values in every guaranteed art-carved diamond ring. For your protection, the name art-carved is in the ring on the tag. We strive to merit your confidence by offering only merchandise of lasting beauty, reliability, and fine quality. Our service is unexcelled. There's more fun than ever in your living room when you're the proud owner of a smart new Motorola television set. Motorola is tops in engineering and in styling too. Motorola gives you the ultimate in performance and a glowing pride of ownership. Smart Motorola cabinets are packed full of amazing new exclusive electronic developments. See Motorola, your eye tells why Motorola's a better buy.
Come in soon for a demonstration of the beautiful, brilliant-toned Motorola radios. Let us give you the complete facts, and you'll agree that Motorola is your best buy. Colorado's famous Garden of the Gods, one of the most beautiful of America's tourist spots. And here's the most beautiful way to see America, in a sparkling new Pontiac, the most beautiful thing on wheels. Powerful, smooth, dependable, and economical, Pontiac is low in price. Your own experience will tell you that dollar for dollar, you can't beat a Pontiac. Equipment, accessories, and trim subject to change. Come in and get the complete facts about the sensational new Pontiacs, a wonderful car to own, to drive, or be seen in. The beautiful Pontiacs are priced just above the very lowest. Hiya, folks. I'm from Silco, famous for quality the world over. I'm Blur. And I'm Smear. We just love television. Not to ruin it, you mean. I'll fix you. Get Philco Balanced Beam Television, peep squeak. No blur, no smear, just a clear picture. Clear, sharp, perfectly focused over the entire picture area. Yes, Philco Balanced Beam brings you the finest picture in television. We will be happy to show you the complete line of new Philco radios. Come in soon and see for yourself why Philco, famous for quality the world over, is your best radio buy. A well-organized service department with special equipment and trained personnel schedules and ships the playlets and attached trailers so that they reach the local theaters each week at the proper time for showing. The advertiser has no screening worries. Before closing, let us consider some of the outstanding advantages of motion picture advertising. The illustrations in printed advertising are motionless, silent, like this. We add the voice of radio, the picture comes to life in natural color, and details are shown in billboard proportions. Thus, we combine sound, action, color, and detail enlargement to produce advertising that commands the undivided attention of millions of theater goers every week as they see a product in use. Screen advertising will sell your product. regret that at the moment our crews are shooting outside on location. Therefore, we would like to take this means of showing you how the stage operates. The stage buildings contain 30 permanent sets, living rooms, kitchens, bathrooms, and so forth. When special sets are required, Alexander Film Company's expert set men construct them to the client's specifications. And a scenario writer developing and polishing scenarios that sell his product. The cast is selected from hundreds of professional models always available. The cameramen and light men light the first set, line up the cameras and camera equipment, and the scene is rehearsed. Then when everything is exactly right, it's lights, action and camera, and the scene is shot. Sometimes in midwinter, a warm summer scene is needed, or in the heat of summer, a winter scene is called for, or some special effect is wanted. This is where Alexander's huge process screen comes into the picture, literally. By rear projection, the desired background effect is thrown onto the translucent screen. A matching foreground is built, and presto, weather made to order. This is what production. camera sees it, and as it will appear on the theater screens around the world. This scene was made, as most are, with an off-screen or ghost voice. However, Sometimes the character being shown is required to speak from the screen. This is called lip sync. And this type of scene is shot on the sound stage, a specially constructed building with heavily insulated walls that prevent echoes and stifle stray sounds capable of being isolated acoustically by means of this huge door. The camera is housed in a special blimp that effectively muffles even its slight whir. Here is a lip sync shot actually being made. Sound. Sound ready. Sync. 220. Camera. Camera ready. I'll meet you at the drugstore in a few minutes. Goodbye. Very good. Cut. Ready. As can easily be seen, hours, sometimes days, are required to shoot a scene that is on the screen for just a few seconds. However, 
the excellence of the finished production justifies the pains taken. To illustrate, here are some completed platelets in which the various techniques you have just seen have been used. Look, no hands. Well, Junior, you aren't the only one who can do stunts. Believe it or not, Mother is doing her washing right now. In her electric machine, of course. Look, no water-soaked hands, no hard work or worry. Wash day simply means the satisfaction of an immaculate wash magically done in your electric machine. Looks like the family is headed for another picnic. And the little folks can hardly wait to learn the contents of that big picnic basket. Look at those delicious pastries. They are tops on the list for the children. Seems that pastries are tops for grown-ups, too. Our attempting pastries are tasty treats for all occasions. You'll hear the words drugstore in many conversations. For instance, you can get it at the drugstore. Try the drugstore first. I'll meet you at the drugstore in a few minutes. Goodbye. It's truly the family shopping store with thousands of articles for your health and pleasure. Once again, we are sorry you have missed seeing our camera crews in action. Please come again and extend our invitation to your friends. Thank you. Enjoy making it. And for added pleasure, there's a big supply of crystal clear 7-Up in the refrigerator. Welcome to the Explorers Club and another tale of... There are many palate-pleasing delights. Your family will agree, fresh bakery goods are a delightful addition to every meal. <laughs> It was hot in the desert when before me appeared the solution to the heat. Cool sportswear in the latest styles and fabrics. You'll enjoy eating it. Before television, movie theaters entertained us. Through it all, there was advertising. The channel-changing generation of today is accustomed to seeing 30-second spots. But before the remote control, audiences flocked to the theaters to see fantastic Hollywood productions. As the golden age of Hollywood reached its peak, so did screen advertising, and the cream of the crop was the Alexander Film Company in Colorado Springs. The heart and the soul of the Alexander Film Company were the owners, brothers J. Don and Don M. Alexander. They started off small, projecting their first ads on the side of a shoe store with a French kerosene lamp charging local merchants four cents a week to advertise. After realizing that their business would be more successful elsewhere, the brothers packed up and moved, eventually landing in Inglewood, Colorado, where their business took flight, literally. Some of the salesmen had very large uh, sales territories, and Jay Don, who uh, believed in flying, he was the 17th man to be licensed as a pilot in the United States. He really believed in that kind of travel. And so he developed uh, this airplane first for the sales force. He wanted his salesmen to have one of these so they could get around these big territories. And uh, uh, the more of them that were seen, the more popular the plane became. And then they began manu manufacturing them for the general public in big numbers. They developed two airplanes, the uh, Eagle Rock and the Bullet, that were extremely well liked by the public. Lindbergh would like to have had a Eagle Rock to make his flight in, but uh, he, we couldn't deliver it when he wanted it. But a fire caused from a short-circuited fan at the airplane factory forced a hasty move to Colorado Springs. And it all happened because uh, in the room where they applied this so-called dope, which was highly inflammable, the doors swung in. And when this explosion happened, the people rushed to these doors pushed against them, and there were several that perished in that fire. And the uh, company had a lot of bad press. Even with legal charges mounting against the Alexander brothers, the Alexander film family still backed the brothers with constant support. I do know, too, that the Alexanders left Denver. And uh, they were going to move to Colorado Springs anyway, 
the plant here was almost completed when this fire in Denver happened, and they just made the move a lot faster. In fact, uh, they moved the film company down here overnight. Uh, that's how loyal the, the film company members were. They all pitched in and worked all night getting everything together so they could get out of town. One thing seemingly may have followed the company's move, something that still inhabits the building now owned by the KKTV television station. The spirit that inhabits this building is probably a former employee of either Alexander Studios or whoever was in the building before that. I caught a glimpse through the corner of my eye a woman walking through this room right here, a heavy set woman. She was a, uh, looked to be in her mid thirties, maybe 40 years old. I followed her out of the room, followed her up the stairs, and she vanished up in the top room up here. Now settled into their new location, the brothers were ready to focus on their main business enterprise, advertising a way of advertising that would help the company flourish in wealth and prosperity for several decades. I think that everything centered on the sales force and they worked very hard to develop a really strong sales force. And it wasn't hard to do because they paid high commissions. And there were always men wanting to work for Alexander's because of those high commission. Not only did the Alexander brothers have an uncanny sales force, but they also had an unbeatable sales strategy hiring salesmen that had the last name of Alexander. Well, the reason, of course, that meant that he could walk into the client and say, this, I am Mr. Charles Alexander of Alexander Film Company. And they'd think they had the big shot. And they would, of course, submit to his, his ideas about how the, the little spot would be and money, money, money. With their business rapidly growing, the Alexander Film Company quickly became the largest employer in Colorado Springs, and it was a popular place to work because of the Alexander brothers themselves. Uh, Alexander did not pay very big wages. They were pretty sad. But uh, the perks went on and on and on. Well, they ran their business like they wanted everybody to feel like they were part of the Alexander family. That was the concept. Time I went to work there, they had a, uh, a retirement plan and they had bonus. Uh, every Christmas, they had give bonuses out. G Dog always passed out turkeys at Christmas time. Uh, hams were passed out at Easter time. Uh, when the circus would come to town, J Dog would buy a great block of tickets, and he'd walk through the plant, giving everybody tickets. And that man it was amazing. Would know how many tickets every member needed. He'd know that this guy had three kids, that guy had two kids. It was amazing, and he knew all their names. And he never wanted to be called Mr. Alexander. He was J. Don to everybody. Well, J. Don was, uh, he was more of a sales type person. He had more outgoing personality. DM was, uh, uh, I never really, I never really talked to DM. He was more of a, quieter type person. He, most of his contact was just with the engineering department and those people. Don M was the uh, head of the production department. <clears throat> he was a brilliant man. He was a Rhodes Scholar. And uh, he developed the uh, Alexander color system. He developed a lot of the equipment that was used on the stage and in the laboratory. He was a very, very smart man. The Alexander Film Company wasn't the largest employer for no reason. Because of a substantial client base, they were always in demand during the golden age. They were doing fine. They were the world's largest, you know, theater advertising company. And in fact, there were several other companies in the business. And I think that Alexander, I don't know, but I think Alexander Film also had a part of their business. I don't think, I think that they might have kind of had a monopoly on the, on the thing. Because the only really uh, competition they had was MPA out of New Orleans. Carl Mabry was their only main competition. This demand for the Alexander film advertising led to some of the most interesting ad films of the time. From car ads to ads for 7-Up, the heyday of the Alexander Film Company created something that many love to remember. And what I liked best about that was that I didn't have to wear a, 
can't anymore. Because if you're a writer, you have to go and talk to the client, and you have to look proper. And I looked proper with it. Now, when you're, when you're a director, you can just have an open shirt. You can even wear a beret if you want to. And you sit in a chair, and I like that, and somebody comes behind you, and your name is on it. For a while, it was the biggest topic of Alexander Film Company was just how far can you get before you are cheating on the public. And it, it, was, it, was, it could be said that sometimes we cheated on the public. Others don't believe in growing old at all. They own a Honda. Optional push-button starting, three-speed transmission, automatic clutch, and a four-stroke 50cc engine give you get-up-and-go action. And a Honda doesn't gulp gas, just sips it. 225 miles to a gallon. Baby, it's like flying. Honda's dual cam-type brakes on both wheels mean real braking safety. A Honda's for the young at heart of any age. It's fun to own a Honda. Honda, world's biggest seller. Uh, in automobiles, for instance, how on earth do you get an uh, a great big old boat of an automobile that corners like that? How do you get it going, zoom, 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 like this? Because filmmaking is really a lot of trickery. It's not what you see. And the car of the year sets a great new performance record. This is one of their most prized and fascinating film ads. A helicopter flew the shell of a car, an actress, and a technician to the top of a butte in Utah. The technician was asked to hide under the car because the actress did not want to be up on the butte alone. After the filming was complete, the wind became so strong that the helicopter could not get in close enough to get them. It wasn't until dusk that they were able to rescue the actress and the technician. As scary as it was, the groundbreaking ad film won several awards and has been replicated numerous times, even in today's technologically advanced society. With styling that brings you back to look and look again, Chevrolet stands alone. Alone in pure dedication to beauty and relaxation. Of course, to try and bring in the, the right uh, cars at the right time and get them back up out of places that you shouldn't have put them in the first place. But... Uh, it worked, seemed to work out all right. With the advent of a little thing called television and increasing pressure on the Alexander brothers, the film company became the center of an ever-increasing whirlwind. It just about ruined the company. Um, when TV came along, there were about 17,000 theaters running Alexander movie ads. And uh, a few years after TV came along, uh, those theaters began closing. The one thing that sort of saved the company during those years was the drive-in theater. It became popular, and during the summer months, business was pretty good. But uh, the volume really fell off uh, after TV came along. One thing I remember very, very well was the last conversation I ever had with J. Don. And this was only a few days before the man died. And uh, w we were talking about uh, his life. And I said, it must be absolutely wonderful to have lived a life uh, that uh, built an idea into an organization that supported so many hundred families and to have made friends all over the world. And uh, I said, I, uh, I will always envy you for what you've done. And he said to me, Leland, we have been total failures. And that really surprised me because I thought he was a great success, multimillionaire with a yacht and his own plane and so on. But he said, if we had played our cards right and held on to the aircraft business, we'd have had a factory that would reach from here to the Air Force Academy. <laughs> he died disappointed. 
The absence of J. Don produced the end of the original Alexander Film Company, and so his death marked the end of an era, an era highlighted by the importance of employees, family, and award-winning ads, none of which would have been possible without the brilliance of Don M., or most importantly, the charismatic personality of J. Don.